Good morning. Thank you for uh, thank you for being here. Pleasure to be here. It's a, it's a great event. So uh, we've got a presentation for you this morning that's built on our experience with delivering optimized inventory and replenishment planning to quite a few companies that are manufacturing companies or hybrid manufacturing, MTO, and distribution companies. So you can see here four bullets. We're going to take you through the challenges that we see or the reasons why our customers adopt this kind of solution. We'll actually look at it, uh, the key, key elements of it. We'll demo a little bit of it, just a, a fraction of the functionality, talk a bit about the results, and look forward to questions. So before I get started on that, just a few words about Novobi. We're a gold partner. We have been for quite a few years, top five in the US. A very strong technical and execution team. So uh, 18 certified Odoo experts. We have CPAs on board. We have business analysts on board, 70 plus team members. And we've delivered over 150 solutions. And uh, you can see up here, 78% of the projects go live in three to six months. I wanted to round it up to 80%, but my engineer said, mm -mm, it's 78%. So there we go. Um, we, uh, uh, we, we've got very little turnover, and we've got a uh, great relationship with Odoo. We also, this year, because we've been growing rapidly year after year after year, we're now in the Inc. 5000 fastest growing companies in this last year. Uh, so we're having a good time. So let's take a, a brief look at you know why what is it and why, why do we talk about dynamic planning? Uh, probably no surprise to you, but what our customers say is we do planning and then something changes. And typically it's demand, so it's a big one, but also old products replace new products and it's not clear what the demand's going to be. Suppliers change their lead times and their prices and other constraints hit. And every time that happens, typically there's a lot of manual processing to go in and change things. And then customers that we talk to have layers of spreadsheets that they use. And then they have to key it back into Odoo. And so the end result of that is that their inventories are too high or too low. Delivery times uh, are, not, are not met. And that's very expensive for the business. So. That's why they come to us and, and we have this conversation and it's all about automation. So if anything changes, you need to be able to make that change and then follow it through or see it follow through all the way through to a replenishment plan and then a, uh, a purchase order that goes to, to the right vendor for the right amount in the right time. Uh, so you can see here that uh, all of that needs to be automated. And so we've built this end-to-end -end automation. And we're going to talk, we're going to look at replenishment today. But a, a part of the solution that we have is also a forecasting engine. It's called here, uh, we call it Smart Inventory Engine. Also, it's AI-based. Uh, and it's got a lot of automation built into it to figure out of all the hundreds or thousands of either products and or uh, components and materials, how to, how to forecast three months out, six months out, 12 months out, whatever it may be, so that you've got the right data going into the sort of review and replenishment process. So, we're not going to look at the operation of that engine, but I want to show you that it's there. The alternative to that is that you enter the demand into Odoo directly yourself manually, or you import it, as some of our customers do, from a spreadsheet, load it up into Odoo, and then go from there. 
Uh, and then at, as a result of that, you can see inventory status, which is a key part of it, and then your what if operation. So visually, uh, this is kind of what the workflow looks like. And on your left is that top left is that smart inventory engine. That's one way of getting a demand forecast, or you can enter it in some other way. And that produces the first demand forecast, the demand report, which is where you start then looking at fine tuning what that's produced. And then on the right, you'll see how everything gets exploded from bombs where relevant, because some you know, some of our customers have pretty simple bombs, you know, with, you know, maybe five or a dozen components. Other of our manufacturing customers gets a lot more complicated. We have a, you know, spa uh, a space engineering company that sends rockets into space and their bombs are 10 nested bombs deep with literally thousands or tens of thousands of components in there. So that can be, that can be fun. So you, you can see that, that, that flow. And then here, the two, the two light green boxes that you see here are points in the process where, as an example, you can overwrite because what the, you know, what the forecast engine produces is based on history doesn't necessarily know what you know in terms of you know what um, promotions you're going to be running or you've got visibility on a big deal from a customer uh, and you need to feed that in to the, the, the demand to make that change. And similarly, you may want to change vendors, you may want to change quantity, lead times and so on. So that's that's where you'll see kind of an override. So I'm going to take a shot here at uh, showing you some of that. So if we go into inventory here, um, and Lee, how do I get rid of this? Not now. Oh, well. OK, so if we go here into the inventory status report, can I move this out of the way? Nope. OK. So, so if you look at the inventory status report here, so you can see, uh, I wish I could get rid of this. Because you could. No luck with the X. So, okay, you, you just, sorry? And? <laughs> that is, sorry? Okay. Sure. Yay. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. T to, to the rescue. And, uh, OK. Yeah, I got it. I got it. OK, inventory status report here. So for, it, for all, the, all the components in every, uh, all the products and the components in all the bombs, you can see here immediately what, what's on hand, what's coming in, scheduled to come in, um, the forecast demand for a specific date and the amount of that forecast demand, and then a recommended order quantity. That recommended order quantity is based, of course, on reorder rules. They themselves are dynamically updated uh, based on lead times, minimum order quantities from a vendor, and so on. 
uh, and the status, you can see here, everything's red, so we're in trouble um, from a replenishment point of view. But uh, fortunately, this is not one of our customers. This is just data we have in a demo system. So if we, uh, so take, take this office chair, the black, we'll, we'll use that as a common theme over here on the right. We, we can hit this icon, and this will tell us if there are any incoming uh, orders from vendors, and it'll show us uh, sales orders that, that, are, that are out there as well, so you can see for any one of those items what the status is in a bit more detail, specifically for, for vendors and customers. Uh, let me go back to inventory status report so that you can see that. And uh, this, this time we'll just uh, take a look at this product specifically. So we've got a number of tabs here, all kinds of information, but we've got a forecasted demand button here. And that will give you a view of uh, last year's uh, historical uh, demand in the blue, the current forecast demand in the orange, and the actual up to today. And, you know, it looks like, looks like your demand's going through the floor. Well, that's because we're only part way through a week, so th there are going to be some orders on the way. But uh, just, to, just to show you how this works in terms of overriding the automation. We'll take this data point down here. So uh, the week ending October 22nd, we currently have a forecast of 666. Um, and so we'll, we'll go back and we'll take a look at, uh, now we'll go back to operations here. And you see here, all of this, by the way, is integrated into Odoo, so there's some extra menu options that you get to learn to use. And we can look at forecasted demand, which is what that sort of blue box was. Maybe I can go back to that. No, wrong way. Here you go. So, you know, this is what we're looking at here, this blue box. And the, the values in there. So again, we go into take a look at that product there, um, and or we will, but we we'll say we're going to we're going to create an addition to the forecast of demand. So we'll go find that product if it'll let us. Which I'm sure it will. There it is, and we know that we have uh, customer or the the saying that uh, for this week, which was ending 10.22, we're going to add, it was, remember it was down at 6.66, the value, but just we're going to say, well, actually, it turns out we have another 1,000 units uh, that we need for that. We save it, and now we can go back to our inventory status report, bring up that black chair again, and look at its forecasted demand, and now you'll see we push that forecast up to there. Um, so what we're doing is overriding the automation that's built into all of this. Okay, so that's, that, that's what we're doing. The other thing that we can do is, um, let me make sure I get this right. Okay, so let's go back to our inventory status report, and this time we're going to take that same item and we're going to do some replenishment planning for it. Okay, so this is, this is now a replenished view. We can do this for multiple products at a time and adjust them all by percentage up or down, or we can go in one at a time. And, uh, and work at it that way. So here you can see we could change the vendor to any other one. We could change the lead time. 
to whatever number of days we want. And that'll just override what we've already got. Uh, 103 days is a bit too long. Let's see if we can avoid this kind of problem. There we go. Um, and the forecast demand and so on. And then if we chose to, we'd hit replenish. And that gives us a uh, draft replenishment order. And, and again, we can look at that and approve it or not. Uh, and uh, make some other changes as well along the way if we need to. Uh, but I'm not going to confirm that at this point. So the other thing I wanted to do was uh, show you one other element of that. So we're going to go back now and take a look at uh, another change that you can make. And I'm going to show you an example of a product, if I can remember the great. I think it's this one. Let's see if that comes up. I think so. So this is a product that has, uh, when we open it up, you can see up here it has two bill of materials. Okay, so we could look at that. We have two, and instead of using the default one, we could choose another one. Uh, so we can change that on the fly as well. So I've been reminded about time limits here. So I've, I've shown you a little bit on here how this system works. There are a lot more features. I probably don't have time to show reorder, uh, changing the reorder rules right now. But if I go back to, uh, to here, we, we've seen the changes that we make, all of this in this flow, and we end up with replenishment plans. And the, the value here is speed and efficiency. If you've got a lot of products and materials, it's also accuracy that you, you don't make manual mistakes uh, and that ultimately you keep your inventory in line. And these are a few of the sort of customers that we've, we've worked with. You can see here different industries. Um, at the bottom there in the green, you can see what they're using to generate the demand forecast. So a lot of them are using the SI engine, but not all of them. Some have their own internal forecasting. Some of them generate it pretty simply. We're agnostic on that. Uh, and the challenges that they're solving for is rapid, adapt, uh, rapid ad adaptation to changing changing environments, changing situations, changing vendors, seasonality, um, the ability to do this. They could do it weekly, could do it monthly. Frankly, they could do it every three minutes if the business is changing that fast. Probably don't want to, uh, but they could. Uh, they could use indirect forecasts through partners and so on, and they can adjust to longer lead times. So we're getting close to the end. Uh, does anybody have any questions at this point? If not, or I can talk about implementation times or data that's required to make this work or whatever uh, is helpful. If not, I thank you very much. Appreciate you.